Well, it's called the happiest music on earth for good reason. For more than a century, the joyous music of the band organ has brought to mind the words carnival, fair, and carousel. The music came from elaborately carved mechanical organs, many of which were built in the late 1800s into the first part of the 20th century. New band organs stopped being built around the time of the Second World War. And after the war, the few organs that did exist were very old and needed a lot of repairs. Many were set aside and left to decay. However, Fortune smiled on one of these beautiful organs. Her name is Madame Laura, and she has been rescued not once, but twice by members of the same family. Producers Debbie Robertson and Vincent Astor traveled to Sykeston, Missouri to meet Madame Laura and Chris Carlisle, the man who is slowly bringing her back to life. Her name wasn't always Madame Laura, but her purpose has remained the same for over a century, to entertain and delight audiences of all ages with her lively, happy music. The Gavioli firm, based in Paris, France, built many fine organs beginning in 1845, and no two were exactly alike. This particular organ began its American career in 1909 on a carousel at Ramona Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and played there for nearly five decades of riders. The rides were removed in the mid-50s, and the Gavioli organ was placed in storage. It was in very bad shape and desperately needed to be rescued. That's where Sykeston businessman Paul Aikens comes into the picture. He had a, in town here, he had a successful um, heating and cooling um, business. You know, he is a contractor and he'd worked so much, you know, to take care of his family, but uh, he developed an ulcer. And his doctor told him he had to quit that or, you know, basically kill him. So Paul Akins packed up the family for a much needed vacation and headed west. It was during that vacation in Lincoln, New Mexico, at the La Paloma Bar, that he stumbled upon an idea. So, there was a little bar that had been there, I guess, for a hundred years, right across the street from the courthouse where Billy the Kid jumped out the window, you know, before Pat Garrett killed him. So I took the family, we were, you know, uh, kind of trying to enjoy ourselves, and the little bar was kind of a museum. We walked in and there sat a Nickelodeon, and I'd forgotten them, you know, for like 20, 25 years. I put a nickel in the thing that didn't work, and I thought, gee, if I could find one, maybe I could get it to play. Well, we found one, and uh, got it to play in. He went all around the country getting, you know, the old rundown machines, like, uh, first to start off with Nickelodeons and music boxes and player pianos and that sort of thing. After a few years, the Aikens family had amassed a large collection of musical machines, including band organs of all shapes and sizes. These were housed in a popular museum complex in Sykeston called the Gay 90s Village. In 1964, Paul Aikens purchased the Gavioli organ along with two others. The wooden Gavioli needed major repairs. Woodworms had done a lot of damage, but the mechanical parts, pipes, and the three beautiful figures were intact. It took two years to finish the restoration, but with the help of sign painters Ted Martin and Gene Crump, Paul Aikens brought the organ back to life. Most band organs are cream colored with a lot of pretty carving on it. Paul Aikens loved colorful things and he described this one as a beautiful gilded valentine. And that's what it is. It was all of the organs that he had were painted bright beautiful colors and you could see them from all over the place. And this one's one of the most striking. Paul loved, he loved gold. Uh, he wanted the machines and things that we'd do, he wanted as much gold, put gold on it. But he loved gold. And he loved red. Red was one of his favorite colors. And he tore them down from scratch. Some of them, when he got them in, they was just a pile of junk. People had already just give up on them. And he'd take them, and, and, and if there was a piece missing, he'd make the new piece and put it in and, and rebuild it. And, it would look brand new when he got done with it. The first time I saw the organ was in 1969 at the Mid-South Fair. I've been going to the Mid-South Fair all my life. I'd seen the Gay 90s Village tent, and one day I met 
Paul and Laura Aikens when I went inside to listen to the organs play and I couldn't get enough. I spent all day there. And I went to the Melody Museum in St. Louis the next summer to see more of the machines and I bought this record that had this big red organ on it and I liked it so much I played it over and over and over again and next year 1969 she was at the fair and I got to see Madame Laura for the first time and I spent the whole day listening. And somewhere along the line somebody noticed that the conductor bore a resemblance to his wife, Laura. And there's a picture of Laura Aikens that looks an awful lot like the central figure on this organ. And I'm also told that she had a rather commanding presence when she wanted to. She would be commanding, I'll guarantee you. Laura would be in charge. The only thing could make it better if it was smoking a cigar, you know, that'd make it perfect. <laughs> but uh, she, my grandma was a unique character too, and, and uh, I think it was a way of playing, paying tribute to her. In 1974, Madame Laura and other parts of the Aikens collection were sold to Bellum's Cars and Music of Yesterday in Sarasota, Florida. I had no idea what be had become of the collection. I had, wasn't even, didn't even know that Bellum's had closed. And I saw an ad online. 87 key, Gavioli organ, Madame Laura for sale with all this list of things that was the matter with her. And I didn't really sure. I was hoping I'd win the lottery and that would have been the first thing I would have done. Would have been bought that organ and sent it to the shop and brought it back to life. That's where Paul and Laura Aiken's grandson, Chris Carlisle, picks up the story. When I first saw the ad for uh, Madame Laura to be sold, it was like I jumped out of my seat and um, I thought to myself, you know, I'd like to get that. Basically, it was a rescue because uh, when I went to look at the uh, organ in North Carolina, we could walk in, well, I walked in and um, he showed me this piece of wood and I just, it was a, about an inch thick. I just poked my finger through it. It was just eaten away with uh, uh, woodworm damage and and it was just pitiful, you know. I thought how my grandpa worked so hard for these machines to be in perfect condition and then people just let them uh, just turn into kindling, really. One of the most interesting things about this particular organ is uh, it's come full circle. When I first heard about it, this guy named Paul Aikens had rescued this band organ out of a shed in Alabama, brought her back to life, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people saw it and enjoyed the music. And then it went away, as things do, and it moved to Florida and then moved back. And it did not escape me that it was Paul's grandson that was rescuing the organ a second time. And I was fortunate enough to be there. I think, it's, I think it's a wonderful thing to see her back here in Sykeston where she spent so much time. And it's like going back a little bit, which is something that you can't do very often. And you go back maybe and it's even better than it was the first time.